Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Joshua, chapter 6. This is that famous story of Joshua and the walls of Jericho and how they came a tumbling down. You remember the old Negro spiritual. Well, in this particular passage, I want to suggest to you that the, not all of the walls of Jericho came a tumbling down. Back in chapter 2, we read about a, a, a woman that was in the city of Jericho when the spies that, Mo, that, that Joshua sent, excuse me, not Moses, that Joshua sent, came there to spy out the land. Her name was Rahab, and she owned or ran an inn, some sort of uh, uh, public house that uh, people could come into. I don't know if the uh, it would be like the saloons in the Old West or just exactly what, uh, what the nature of it was, but it was something of that nature. And she saw these men come in, and she immediately recognized that they were there to spy out the land. So rather than turn them into the king of Jericho, she hid them and said, I know that God has provided this land for you. I know that we're going to be destroyed. And so she hid those spies. She deceived the king and sent his, uh, uh, his soldiers <coughs> excuse me, on a wild goose chase. And then she came back to them and said, look, when you do come in and destroy this, this land and you take these people captive or uh, destroy the people of Jericho, I want you to show me kindness and favor because I've shown you this kindness and favor. And so, they, and so they agreed to do that. She was to put a scarlet thread in the window, and that was going to be a signal to the people of Israel, the soldiers, that uh, the warriors that were going to be coming and destroying uh, the city of Jericho. And so uh, she did that. But then in chapter 6, in verse 20, it says that after they had marched around the city 13 times, yeah, that's one of the things that always strikes us as we read this passage. They marched around that city, and then with a great shout and with trumpets blaring, they, they shouted and the walls came down. I suggest to you, all of them except, Jer uh, except uh, Rahab's. Somehow, her house had to stay there so that the soldiers... The warriors would, would recognize that she was still there and her household was still there. Now, I don't know exactly how that worked. It may have been that, uh, that these uh, warriors, every time they marched around the city, saw the location of Rahab's house so that it may be that the walls came down and whoever was in the place where they had noted the scarlet thread they knew that they were going to protect those people. I don't know how it all worked. It doesn't really matter that I know how it all worked. We can find that out in heaven. The point is that because of Rahab's faithfulness and because of her uh, trust in the God of Israel, this one that she had just heard stories about, that because of that faith, she was spared, and her household as well. It's interesting that Rahab's faith was one that uh, is mentioned all the way back in the book of uh, Hebrews, chapter 11, as being a person of faith. She was one who waited, and, and it's very fascinating to compare her story in chapter 2 with chapter 6 and in Hebrews 11. Because as she is speaking there, uh, the, um, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to note that she doesn't have all of the background that everybody else has. The only thing she's known is that there was a, uh, an event 40 years before where God brought this nation of people through the Red Sea and destroyed the Egyptian army. There were a couple of other places where these two strong kings were defeated on the east side of the Jordan River. But those three events, the Red Sea, 
and the, dis the destruction of these two kings are the only things that she mentions, and yet she understands this nation is going to take our nation. This nation is going to occupy Canaan, and we need to trust that uh, in the God that they serve. That's how she knew, and that's all she knew, and yet she did. And because of that, she's included in the faith chapter in Hebrews chapter 11. I hope we'll have that same faith, and we look forward to meeting her one day. Father, I thank you for the faith of Rahab. I thank you for how good and faithful you have been to her. And indeed, we, we rejoice in her faithfulness and, and the trust that she put in you. We ask that you would help us to be people of such faith, that we would, even in our day, with far more information at our disposal, that we will understand who you are and recognize that you are the true and living God, even as Rahab did. So meet us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.